the problem with gastric cancer is that the uh, majority of the patients they are diagnosed at a later stage the reason being that because the initial symptoms are vague and they are often given only symptomatic treatment no one you know uh, have that uh, have that courage to do all this required investigation so the, the diagnosis is delayed and that leads to disease progression so the initial symptoms include epigastric pain bloating and and presence of early satiety then nausea and vomiting can also happen Usually, dysphagia, anorexia, weight loss happens at, at later stages. Then certain complications can happen, like GI bleeding. GI bleeding can form in the can can occur in the form of hematemesis, malina, and presence of iron deficiency anemia. So, as a rule, as a cause of iron deficiency, if the patient is anemic and there is there is iron deficiency, especially in elderly, so it is recommended that the patient should be offered both the scopies, endoscopy and colonoscopy, to rule out any malignant growth. What are the characteristic signs that we see? So signs, as I mentioned, that anemia is a common sign. And cachexia, which usually occurs in later stage, and that is muscle mass leading to weight loss. An epigastric mass can be felt. And hepatomegaly and presence of ascites, these are all later stages. That is, the, the disease has already spread. Jaundice can also occur at later stage because of involvement of liver, then there are some characteristic features or some named sign that is that occurs in stomach cancer. One is called the Irish node. Irish node means that there is presence of axillary lymph node in patients of gastric cancer. And there is something called as virtuose node that is presence of left supraclavicular lymph node. And there is sister Mary Joseph node that is presence of node around the umbilicus. So all this are uh, very uh, typically characteristic of gastric cancer. And we do see these kind of typical features also, although rare, but I have seen at least three sister uh, Mary Joseph note. And this cancer also has an increased risk of uh, uh, thrombus formation. So we do get uh, patients who have superficial thrombophlebitis and presence of thrombus in other parts of the body. Next slide. So morphology wise, the uh, Grossly, this tumor can present as a polypoidal growth, that is something bulging out from the mucosa, or presence of ulceration, that is ulcerative. It can be superficial spreading. It can be lin uh, uh, linitus plastica. Linitus plastica means that it is a spreading tumor that is that is uh, that is involving almost the entire uh, stomach. Uh, then there are various classifications that is done for the uh, gastric cancer. So the commonly used uh, classification in pathology is the Lorentz classification. So Lorentz classification divides uh, the pathology as intestinal gastric cancer, diffuse gastric cancer, mixed morphology where these two features overlap. And there is some rare histologies that can also happen. So intestinal gastric cancer arises in... Uh, in patients with areas of intestinal metaplasia to form polypoidal tumors or, or ulcers. They occur predominantly in high-risk area and diffuse gastric cancer. It infiltrates deeply in the stomach without forming obvious mass lesions. But it spreads widely in the gastric wall. This is called the linitus plastica, which is associated with a much worse prognosis. Then the mixed morphology, that is, it has a variable features of both the intestinal and diffuse. And the third is the rare type. Really, we can get squamous cell carcinoma or, uh, or a mixture of squamous plus the sedino. So there are certain rare histologies that can also happen. Next slide. So recently, last year, there is also something called as the molecular classification. So stomach cancers, they are divided in terms of molecular classification also. So there are basically four main uh, types of classification. That is genetically stable gastric cancer. Genetically stable usually occurs in the diffuse subtype. This cancer occurs distally and presents at an early end and, and also presents at an early age. Then is the chromosomally unstable gastric cancer. It's the most common present in around 50% of the patients. This uh, type has high number TP53 mutations and TP53 mutations also is associated with most of the uh, cancers and usually indicates an aggressive disease. 
Then is the microsatellite unstable gastric cancer. So microsatellite unstable gastric cancers, they are a distinct group of cancer where the MMR, that is uh, the, uh, the DNA repair mechanism is uh, defective. So these kind of patients, they, they uh, respond very well to immunotherapy drugs. And the fourth is the gastric cancer with, with, uh, with Epstein-Barr virus infection. So next slide. So it's important that we classify the uh, gastric carcinoma based on the site because this decides the, uh, uh, the clinical presentation and most importantly, the surgical plan. So stomach... Uh, cancer can be divided in three parts. Cardia. Cardia means that those uh, tumors which are close to the GE junction, that is proximal or upper stomach. Second is the body. And third is the distal stomach. So you can see from the next, next slide. You can see from the next slide that this is how we classify and divide the, the stomach anatomically for the classification of gastric cancer purpose. So lower esophageal, gastroesophageal junction and the upper gastric cancer, they are usually broadly classified and treated in a similar way. And then the body is the main gastric cancer and the antrum or the distal part, it usually presents, the distal part usually presents with gastric outlet obstruction. Gastric outlet obstruction means that the food is not passed from stomach to duodenum and the patient presents with vomiting. Next slide. So staging, staging means that how do we stage the disease? So, so there are various staging system that we use. So normally what we use is called as the TNM uh, staging system, which I'll discuss in the next slide. So staging means that how early or how advanced the, the disease is. So as a general rule, stage one means that the stage one and two means that the disease is limited to be the primary organ. Stage 3 means that the disease has spread to the neighboring uh, part of the uh, primary organ also. And stage 4 means that the disease has spread beyond its neighboring organs. That is, it has spread to distant organs like liver, bone, etc. So early uh, gastric cancer is limited to the only the superficial layers of the stomach that is mucosa and submucosa with or without lymph node involvements. And early gastric cancer detection rate leads to a very good five-year survival if the patient is treated properly. That is, a five-year survival is close to around 90%. So that means at the end of five years, out of 100, 90% patients will be, will be alive. And the second part is the advanced. So basically, it is more deeper involvement of the uh, gastric uh, layer. It involves the uh, muscularis. It has four, four types and basically the advanced means that it's it's difficult to treat and stage four is also included as a part of advanced. Next slide. So staging, what we follow is the TNM staging. So T0 means that there is no, no evidence of primary tumor. So once we treat the patient with chemotherapy and then we do surgery, so sometimes we do get uh, T0 also. So that we call as complete pathological response. Then T1, T2, T3, T4 is the system that we use. So basically T1 means that it is involving the superficial layer, lamina propria, the muscularis mucosa and the submucosa. And T2 means that it is invading the muscularis propria. T3 means that the tumor penetrates beyond the muscularis propria, that is subserosal connective tissue and without, the, without invasion of the visceral peritoneum. And T4 means that it invades the serosa and also involves the adjacent structures. And then comes the N staging. N means the, the nodes, the lymph nodes. So N is basically one, two, and three. It is for the for gastric cancer classification. It is based on the number of lymph nodes. So if there is involvement of one to two regional lymph node, it is N1. If there is three to six lymph node, then it is N2. If it is uh, seven or more lymph node, it is classified as N3. And then, M mean, uh, and then M means that whether there is presence of distant meds. If there are distant meds, it's, cla it's classified as M1. Distant meds, uh, distant meds mean that is involvement of other organs like liver, bone, lungs, or brain. So what are the complications of gastric cancer? So gastric cancer can present with various complications. So one of the complications is hematemesis, bleeding. 
the other common complication is gastric outlet obstruction if the if the uh, cancer is in the distal part of the stomach so both can be present at an early stage also so if it presents at an early stage it probably leads to an early detection and both can also be detected as a part of advanced disease also then other complications like involvement of uh, uh, presence of fluid in the abdomen that is acidic or peritoneal fluid or pleural effusion or presence of obstructive jaundice. Obstructive jaundice because the growth is so much that it obstructs the biliary drainage system. So it can lead to obstructive jaundice and if the patient has involvement, extensive involvement of the liver then it can lead to jaundice. So all these uh, complications usually presents in patients with advanced disease. So apart from this, there are other complications that can happen. Like there is nutritional deficiency, there is so there is weight loss, uh, weight loss that is called as cachexia. There is decreased appetite, and depending on the organ involvement, it can lead to that specific organ-related complication. For example, if the patient has involvement of the lungs, it can lead to difficulty in breathing, respiratory complications, respiratory failure. And if the patient has involvement of the brain, if the disease has spread to the brain, then it can lead to headache, vomiting, seizures. And if there is liver involvement, it can lead to jaundice, decreased appetite, vomiting. Similarly, bone involvement, bony pain can lead to pathological fracture. 